and um, you know I, I think people doubting him is always going to bring the best out in Tyson Fury. Danny Gaffone here for Pro Boxing fans from Manchester. I had a big day of press conference first. We've got Zelfa Barrett versus Jordan Gill. It's a pleasure to be joined by trainer Jamie Moore. Jamie, you're here for this part of the press conference anyway for Cameron Vong, takes on Jordan Flynn. A lot of praise going the way of both men for taking this fight. It's the sort of fight we don't see given the stages both men are at in their careers. You've said in numerous interviews before how talented a fighter you think Cameron is. Were there ever any reservations about taking what is a significant step up against a fighter like Jordan Flynn? No, I mean, you know, I think when, when you've got a, a fighter like Cameron, who's so sort of um, talented and you don't really want them to, to be matched with the type of kids who, where, where they're not going to really learn any lessons from it at all. And, um, and Jordan Flynn's a good fighter, solid fighter, you know, he's been in a couple of good fights already himself. And, um, and I, I, when, when the fight got proposed to me, I was like, yeah, yeah listen, why not? I'd much rather him be involved in a fight like that at this stage, where both guys are relatively inexperienced, but they're going to learn from it, you know, either way. And, um, you know, and obviously, I wouldn't say it's a 50-50, but it's maybe a 60-40 type of fight, and I think that's a, the perfect type of fight for Cameron, because he's going to improve, he's going to get better from it, he's not going to have it all his own way, which is the best sort of apprenticeship, because by the time he does get to the stage where I believe he will get into title fights and stuff, he's got the lessons on board then, where he's, where he's took it from it. There's been a lot of needle, both men have had plenty to say, we saw there was a bit of push and shoving in the ring a couple of weeks ago. Do you think that having that sort of you know build up and an opponent where there is a bit of nastiness there is that something again that will serve Cameron well as he goes forward? Well, it's just experience, isn't it? And you know, boxing is not just about the fighting part of it. It's about learning to control your emotions and make sure that you know you don't let that your heart rule your head. You know, you've got you've got to make sure you keep cool, calm, and collected. And you can see there's a the bit of needle there between them. So this is a good lesson for him to be able to sort of have them emotions inside him, but have to. For, as, the, as the training camp goes on and now by the time he gets to the fight he's got to learn to control him and, uh, and make sure he can perform properly while he's got those emotions inside him In just a few hours time Jamie will have what with the second press conference for uh, Josh Taylor Jack Catrell too it's a fight that fans thought they were never going to see I'm sure there was a stage you lost faith as Jack's trainer that you would ever get Josh in the ring again just how much of a relief is it to finally have it over line and know Jack will be able to write what he sees as a pretty big wrong uh, in a couple of months time Yeah of course listen Jack's um, He's had a rough ride over the last sort of five years. You know, he, he was mandatory challenger for the world title for a long time, and um, and then by the time he eventually got his shot, then he was the controversy, and then this has dragged on over a couple of years. So I'm just glad, you know, take take away the the, the Josh Taylor situation and the needle between them two. Um, I'm just glad that he's involved in a big fight. So then you bring back into the equation the the, the, the history between them both, and it just I'm, I'm so glad for Jack that for his career, you know. The, it would have been a crying shame for the talent what he's got for him to never be sort of involved in these type of fights. So I'm just glad for him that it's, uh, it's, all, it's all come to fruition for him. As I alluded to there, they met yesterday in Edinburgh. As you mentioned, there is Nido there. They don't particularly like each other. What did you make of the press conference yesterday? Got a bit physical. Uh, a lot of people think Josh maybe didn't look in the best shape. Uh, what was your take on it all? Listen, it doesn't matter does it, if Josh, Josh doesn't look in good shape now. It matters how he looks in 10 weeks' time. So, um, so you know, I don't read into stuff like that. I saw, and you know, certainly hearsay and rumours. Play. I'll, the, what I'll do is I'll do exactly the same as what I did the first time, and I'll make sure we train for the very best Josh Taylor that we can we can do. I'll make sure that Jack Cattle's in the best shape he can possibly be in, and then may the best man win. Jack seems to think that Josh is maybe on the decline. He's maybe seen better days. Is that a view you agree with? Well, we, we'll never know that, will we? And you know sort of common sense and, and um, nature tells you that by the time you're 33 you're probably not as good there'll be very very few fighters get better when they're 33 you know there's the exception to the rule like a Bernard Hopkins but, but generally by the time you get to around 33 you probably just sort of hit the top of the hill and you're on a little bit of a slide on the other side but nothing too much you know Jack's 30 himself um, and you know the only thing I can say on, in terms of the fights what they've had is Josh has been in a lot deeper and he's had harder fights than Jack has so um, so maybe that means that Jack's a little fresher but um, but I don't read into any of these sort of rumours or, or theories that he, you know might be on the slide or he's, he, he doesn't look in great shape because the fight's not here yet in, in 10 weeks time he will be and I will, I will 
get Jack to prepare for him exactly as if he was boxing the the Taylor what boxed um, what I mean who took part in the in the World Series boxing tournament that type of Josh Taylor. One thing Jack certainly will have going in this fight and something he hasn't always had throughout his career is good solid activity. You know, as a trainer, you, you hear any trainer that's the one thing you want. Uh, do you think we do see the best version of Jack Cattrall in a couple of months? Well, he went into the first fight with Josh off of like a 15, 16 month layoff um, and still performed well. So he's got momentum now. He's, he's got activity in the gym. He's just getting better all the time. And that's great to see. He's great to see. And it's good from our point of view. You know, momentum is always good. And, and Josh hasn't been in the ring for 12 months. So, so you know, that's going to be in our favour as well. So I, I know they're not big wins, but all those little things added up give us, give us a better chance. So it's, it's, um, it's all good. It's all positive. Last one on the rematch, uh, given what happened first time round with the scoring, uh, will there be any reservations about the judge in this time? Jack said he wants to go in there and stop Josh Taylor, does that play on your mind uh, going into the rematch? I, I, I'll say the same as what I said going into the rematch with Katie Taylor with Chantel, you know, you can't afford to think about things like that, you have to concentrate on your job, make sure you get your fighter to perform to the best of his ability and then you've just got to hope that things go the right the way they should. Let's talk a bit about Chantel and Katie, I watched an interview with Eddie the other day and you know things have gone a bit quiet. On the trilogy front, he sort of basically hinted that the balls with Chantel and yourself and her team's court. Uh, what is the hold up in getting this trilogy fight over the line? I, I've no idea to be honest. We so me and Chantel aren't working together anymore, so we've just decided to go our separate ways. And um, and, and we're not, we haven't fell out or anything like that. I, just, I wish her all the best. Um, I'll always love her. You know, she, we, we we're a great ride together, but we're, we're not working together now. So um, so I've no idea what's going on. No problem. Uh, last one I get you th think your thoughts on is this whole debacle around Tyson Fury, the cut, the all. Andrew Yusik fight being postponed. A lot of conspiracy theories online that he inflicted the cut. I can tell by your reaction. Cut, cuts happen. Uh, I said this a few times in different interviews. I got cut underneath my eye um, 10 days before I fought Matthew Macklin. Um, luckily, it was it only needed five stitches and it was really soft skin underneath. And then, it, um, and then five days later, I had the stitches out and I was able to fight. But it could have been a, a different story. So these things happen in boxing. You're getting punched in the face and you have to spar close enough to a fight to make sure you've still got your, your timing and your distance. So so you, you, sometimes these things are just unavoidable. A lot of people's opinion, it seems, is shifting on the fight. I'm certainly seeing a lot more people picking Alexander Yusik than it was five, six months ago. Uh, has your views on the fight changed given the cut and Tyson's performance in Singanu or what's your take on it? Not really, no. I, I just think that these type of fights have always generally brought out the best in Tyson Fury and uh, and the size things can't be not an issue um, I think Tyson Fury is a lot sort of better in the pocket and dogging a fight out than, than people give him credit for and um, you know I, I think people doubting him is always going to bring the best out in Tyson Fury very last one Jamie because I've taken up plenty of your time uh, Anthony Joshua Francis Ngannou a couple of weeks time Again, something I'm, this, people seem to be split on. If Ngannou, based on what he's done against Tyson Fury, can cause AJ some of the problems, a lot of people see it as sort of opportunistic from AJ and that he'll make light work of him. Uh, what side of the fence do you sit on? Yeah, listen, I, I really, I'm, I'm intrigued by it. I really am. I want to see if it was Fury who under, underperformed and Ngannou was made to look better than he was, or whether he really is, you know, a, a decent boxer. Um, I thought Anthony Joshua looked the best he's looked for years in his last fight, and uh, and if that type of Joshua turns up, then Ngannou's got his hands full. He really has. Um, he looked like he had a decent chin, but Anthony Joshua on his night punches a lot harder than Tyson Fury, so um, so that could be the difference. And uh, and uh, honestly, I really can't wait to watch that one. Had to push you for a prediction. Yeah, I think AJ might take him a few rounds to, to sort of wear him down. Um, he might even have to weather a few little storms himself, you know, because Ngannou can punch. But I'd guess maybe six, seven rounds he might have him out there. Jim Murray, thanks so much for giving your time. Enjoy a long day of press conference at Manchester. Cheers, Cheers pal. Thank you. Man.